Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about the reality of working in cybersecurity. And this is going to be a part two of my last video for the downsides of working in cybersecurity. So one of the first things I want to start off this video with is the fact that cybersecurity jobs, a lot of them can be pretty boring. So if you're someone who's been interested in cybersecurity, there definitely has been some kind of influence from the media that showed that shows some kind of hacker in their lab and they had a dark screen, they typed random things and then and then bam, they hacked into some kind of system. And while that looks very cool on TV shows and movies, that's typically not what your day-to-day -day job is going to look like. For example, even on the red team or an offensive security team, you're not going to be hacking like that so easily, first of all. And a lot of your time is also just going to be spent writing reports and documentation about the hack or vulnerability that you're able to exploit. And if you're in any other cybersecurity role, for example, like me, I'm currently working as a security analyst. There is no part of my day that looks like what it does in the movies. When you think about someone who works in cybersecurity, most of my day is meetings, looking at tickets in my queue, looking at any alerts that may have come up, following up with my teammates, going to team meetings, and then doing the occasional vulnerability POC. And that is really my day. So even when I was working in my junior pen testing team, most of the exploits that we look for are already down on paper. And typically we don't go off and look for extra things unless the application is very niche and or just seems very insecure, which sometimes it can be that way. But even then I'm following a script of the vulnerabilities that I'm looking for. And it's essentially just a checklist for things I have to find in the application and check whether or not it is successful or vulnerable to certain exploits. So nowhere near as crazy exciting as what you probably see in the movies. And the day-to-day -day tasks working in cybersecurity can be pretty boring, especially when you're in the same role for more than a few years. You probably know just about everything you need to know about the job. And after that, it really is just up to you to find other things to learn and, and to become more passionate about outside of what you're already working on. All right, next item on this list is career and salary plateaus. So of course this depends on where you are in your career, but I do think in cybersecurity there is there is a point where you've reached some kind of senior role as a cybersecurity professional and that is really kind of the plateau of where you can go with your career. After that, you either stay in that role for the rest of your career unless you decide to switch in the future or you go into management. And typically management, in my opinion, is a complete career change when as an individual contributor, you're managing technology, cybersecurity, different assessments. As a manager, you're managing people and, and their goals and budgets and things like that. And I know a lot of cybersecurity professionals who reach that point where they're really the best on their team and they don't want to become managers. They just don't want to manage people. They like what they're doing, but they also want to grow in their career. And typically that ends up meaning that they are going to switch companies either for an even higher title, like a team lead, or for higher compensation. One of my previous ethical hacking mentors actually did just this, where they were so good at their jobs, could have had another promotion if they really wanted it, but there was just no other role above them on that team. And the only way that they could have moved up was if they took on a manager position, which they completely did not want to do. And they knew that it wasn't something that they wanted in their career. And then after that, they just ended up interviewing for other companies, for other roles. And that at least helped them with their salary growth for their skills so that so that they were able to get properly compensated for their skill set and the work that they can do. So obviously if you're someone who is in their early career like me, you probably aren't going to be worrying right now about the salary plateaus or career plateaus, but I do think that it's something to keep in mind when you're kind of, you know, 10, 15 years into your career. At that point, you're probably going to be a senior level person in your area of expertise. And from there, you're eventually going to have to make some kind of pivotal decision for whether you want to stay as a cybersecurity individual contributor or move into management. So definitely something to keep in mind that there is kind of a cap for your career unless you are switching around companies or willing to manage people instead. Number three on this list is the fact that there is no room for mistakes. So this is something that really got to me in my early career. As someone who just started out, I was always afraid of doing something wrong. In cybersecurity, even writing the wrong metrics in a presentation, just an incorrect copy and paste can be can mean the difference between your team doing really well and doing it very poorly. And that's not even a technical mistake. It's just something more presentation based. And even nowadays when I'm dealing with tickets, I do find myself following up with my teammates that are more senior than me to make sure that I'm on the right path or saying the right thing. Because sometimes there can be very sensitive incidents or 
topics that come up and if you dive in head first but give the wrong answer it always ends up causing more confusion for the customer or the stakeholder especially when they're getting different answers from different people or even just things like upgrading software or upgrading hardware if there's one thing that goes wrong and the whole, and the whole system comes crashing down that kind of stuff is definitely not for the faint of heart especially in your early career when you're someone who wants to do the right thing and do a good job but also doesn't want to make any dire mistakes along the way i'm not saying to avoid mistakes because obviously mistakes are inevitable in your career especially in cybersecurity or working in tech in general but obviously you want to stay away from the ones that are going to shut everything down and, and create incident response alerts to everyone in your company and the senior leadership team those are the kind of mistakes that i'm asking you to avoid so the key really is to follow up and ask questions when you need to but i also try not to ask the same question twice just because if i ask my teammate a question i usually write down their answer so i don't have to keep going back to them for the same things over and over because i know they're busy and doing other things but asking questions for the first time when you actually don't know it is probably going to be the best option for you and i used to be really shy about this just asking questions to other people my manager my teammates i just not asked because i didn't want to seem lost or unprepared or unknowledgeable but honestly it is better to seem that way especially as a beginner people expect it they don't expect you to know everything so ask all your questions and then learn from them and if just something as small as asking a question can prevent can prevent something like your system going down completely it's going to be very worth it for you to ask that question. All right, number four on this list is the lack of resources for cybersecurity. So this may be an interesting one to you guys considering I always talk about this on the channel where there are lots of, where there are so many different openings and roles for cybersecurity that are coming up and how as a career it's so lucrative and, and has great job security as well as salary. But I also think that depending on the company that you go to, there may not be as developed of a security team as other companies that are Fortune 500 companies or already well established into their security program. For example, if you're going to a smaller or medium sized company or just started their security programs or all of the audits and certifications that go into information security you may find that there is a lack of resources for security and it's not always due to budget constraints there most likely is a budget available for the cybersecurity team for different things that happen throughout the year but in terms of the lack of resources this could be different applications different tools that your team might need and the lack of those may just be because there wasn't a person previously who had recommended to the business or the senior leadership team or whatever executives are in charge of the budget and approving the tools and vendors that you accept, there just may not have yet been a person to do that yet, to advocate for these tools that your company needs to pass their audits and to make their customers happy and to basically ensure that they're able to keep data secure. So that in turn can end up leaving you in a cybersecurity team with less resources or less tools that you may need to do the job. And it may end up being also on you to advocate for the tools that you do need. And even if there is a budget allocated for it, you probably still have to write the project report the the reasons for why this tool is needed maybe present this to the senior leadership at your company to show them why you need this technology for your cybersecurity program and honestly that can just be part of growing pains at a smaller company or a medium-sized company and i wouldn't necessarily say that this is a con because you can also learn a lot from implementing different things checking out different vendors choosing the right one for you it's all just good experience at the end of the day as long as you're able to take advantage of the opportunity and I know many, many cybersecurity professionals who would kill to be able to choose the IDS or the SIEM tool that their company currently uses. So definitely take that opportunity to heart when it is presented to you. All right, so the next thing is probably one that you have also expected, and that is being in a high stress environment as well as alert fatigue. So if you haven't heard of alert fatigue, it's, it really is exactly what it sounds like, where essentially you get overwhelmed by the amount of, of alerts, messages, pings, logs anything that comes your way as a security analyst or someone else working in cybersecurity and having that happen over and over and over again for months at a time years at a time it really gets to you and it does eventually lead to burnout while also at the same time creating a very high stress environment because you never know when the next alert is going to go off when the next call is going to come and say something went wrong and then you have to hop right on it so i know i said in the beginning that cybersecurity can be can be a boring job and it really can be on a regular basis 
but of course it is still a very high stress environment where you are managing and securing people's data it could be their money their personal information anything else in between and it really can cause stress and anxiety especially if you're not taking care of yourself mentally physically spiritually taking the right pto when you need it working long hours and working on weekends doing on-call hours on top of that all these things are pretty common for the cybersecurity field and there's definitely going to be ebbs and flows where there may be slower periods where your team has less work and then there's busy periods like the end of a quarter or the end of the year where things might really pick up or even at the end of a project if your team is more project based and while there isn't necessarily a fix for it and personally how i feel about it is just the fact that your health and your wellness are going to be more important than your day job. And I know a lot of times in our society, we kind of tie our identity to how well we do in our jobs. Typically the first time you meet someone, what you're going to ask them is about what they do for work. And while that may not inherently be a bad thing, I do think that over time, if you're spending so much time dedicated to your career and you let everything else like your health and your wellness fall to the wayside, it's going to catch up to you. And when it does, it's going to hit you like a brick wall. So as long as you're keeping up with your personal health, your friends, family, hobbies, things outside of work that aren't completely tied to your cybersecurity professional identity, that in general is going to help a lot. And this leads me very nicely into our last topic, which is burnout. So I actually made a video on burnout in cybersecurity recently, and I can link that video below if you guys want to check that out. And basically there I discuss all of the potential reasons for burnout in cybersecurity and, and also potential ways to alleviate them if you're someone who is going through something similar. And I don't want to scare you guys away if you're currently a student studying to go into cybersecurity. All these factors can be alleviated or at least brought down a notch so that you're not experiencing stress on a regular basis at work. Burnout is something that you hear about a lot in cybersecurity and alert fatigue is one of the things that leads to burnout. And I'm sure there's a better official definition for burnout out there, but just from the top of my head, it really is just you getting so tired, stressed, and overwhelmed by your job that you eventually and slowly feel a lack of motivation, don't want to get up in the morning, have super intense Sunday scaries, maybe not just on Sundays, but every day of the week, and just don't have the effort to push forward and learn like you used to. Those are probably the typical signs of burnout that you'll see. Some people may have burnout or maybe on their way to burnout and may not even know it. And that's something that's kind of scary because burnout to me is a slow burn. It starts with a really heavy workload and hard projects and hard deadlines. And the more time that you're spent in that kind of environment, the worse it gets, honestly, and the only way to make it better is by taking a break, making changes in your life, a shift in priorities, balancing work and your personal life a lot better than probably what you're currently doing. But even at the end of this long list of the reality of working in cybersecurity, I still believe that cybersecurity is an awesome field to go into, especially if you're someone who is very passionate about the topic and enjoys learning new things, learning about the newest hacker trends, learning new skills and tools to use in your job. But again, that doesn't have to be your entire life. And as someone who enjoys having multiple different hobbies, Outside of my day job as a security analyst, I also do this YouTube channel, even though it is cybersecurity related. I also spend time on my hobbies. I try to go to the gym somewhat regularly on a weekly basis. I spend time with people outside of work. I enjoy hiking, going outdoors, traveling. So basically just don't have your life revolved around just your job because that's just all your eggs in one basket. And God forbid if something ever happened, then it's going to hit you a lot harder compared to if you have your attention and your time split across many different avenues in life that make you happy and fulfilled and not just your nine to five. All right, so that's it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. Would love to start a conversation as well as on the Discord channel if you guys aren't already on there. It is also linked in the description. By the way, I'm currently working on my cybersecurity course for how to get your first job in cybersecurity. And that is going to be a huge process. So if I am a little bit more absent on this channel, that may be why. But by the time you see this, I'll probably already be starting to film the course. And then it'll go live sometimes towards the end of the year during the October, November, maybe even December timeframe, depending on how busy I get. Thank you guys so, so much for all of your support. I appreciate it so much. And I'm so grateful for this community. And if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.